So a study examined smoking cessation medicines and the risk of suicide, non-fatal self-harm, and treated depression in the clinical practice research data link. So why exactly did we do this research? Well, as we all know, smoking is a major cause of premature mortality and morbidity worldwide. And just last year in the UK, there were approximately 100,000 smoking-related deaths, mostly due to diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cardiovascular disease, and lung cancer. Now, the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence actually recommends pharmacotherapy with varenicline, bupropion, and nicotine replacement therapy as cost-effective and clinically effective interventions for smoking cessation. However, there have been concerns from regulatory agencies in the UK, as well as the USA, that actually some of these medicines, particularly varenicline, may increase the risk of suicidal behaviour. And this has resulted in safety warnings about these drugs. So it was really important for us to examine the risk of suicidal behaviour associated with using these medicines. We use data from a large anonymised database, the Clinical Practice Research Data Link, which consists of GP consultations, prescriptions, hospital admissions, linked with death records for over 5 million patients. We had used this database before, about four years ago, to look at the issue and the links between varenicline and suicidal behaviour. But at the time, fewer people had been prescribed the drug, and the links with mortality and hospital admission data hadn't been established. So we were able to overcome those limitations in this particular study, which was uh, very useful for us. We found the records of around 120,000 men and women who had taken a smoking cessation drug for anaclin, bupropion or nicotine replacement therapy. 31,000, around a quarter of all these people had taken for anaclin, and that's three times more people than in our previous study. Our analysis compared the risk of self-harm, suicide and depression in people taking one of these three commonly used smoking cessation drugs. We looked at the three month period after people started taking the medicines and compared risks of these outcomes amongst those three groups of people. Because of the rich amount of data collected on the database, we were able to control for a wide range of factors that could account for any apparent differences in suicide or depression risk between those taking the different medicines. So for example, we could take account of differences in levels of mental illness, differences in past self-harm and previous suicide attempts between the three groups of medicines. We did this using three different approaches multivariable models, propensity score adjusted models and instrumental variable analysis. Among the approximately 120,000 people in the study, we identified nearly 100 suicides and episodes of self-harm and 1,000 people who had treatment for depression three months after their first prescription of one of the three smoking cessation agents. Compared to nicotine replacement therapy, there was little evidence that either varenicline or bupropion were associated with suicide and self-harm with effect estimates attenuated somewhat in the fully adjusted compared to the basic model. Neither was there evidence that varenicline or bupropion were associated with an increase in treatment for depression. Observational studies of drug effects are prone to confounding by indication if the indication for treatment, in this case smoking cessation, is related to the risk of future adverse health events, in this case self-harm or depression. One solution to this problem is a statistical approach known as instrumental variable analysis. Instrumental variable analysis uses naturally occurring variation in prescribing to mimic random allocation to treatment in an RCT. We use differences in GP's propensity to prescribe or preferences for varenicline on nicotine replacement products to investigate the effects of varenicline on suicide and self-harm. Physicians' preferences are good instruments because they will be affected by physicians' beliefs and experiences, but are unlikely to be affected by their most recent patients' comorbidities. This means we can use them to demonstrate the causal effects of the drugs. In this study, for most of our outcomes, we found little evidence that our results suffered from confounding by indication. This provides further reassurance that smoking cessation treatments, like varenicline, are unlikely to greatly increase risks of suicide or self-harm. So to conclude, we actually found no evidence for an increased risk of suicidal behaviour with either varenicline or bupropion compared with nicotine replacement therapy. And, you know, there were several strengths of this study. It was an extremely large study. We included more than 100,000 patients. And also, we used validated outcomes for suicide and non-fatal self-harm. We also obtained similar findings when we used novel methods of assessing the impact of confounding by indication. 
So overall, we believe that our findings should provide some reassurance for prescribers and users of these medicines.